Hello everyone, welcome to Malleus Gaming, I'm your host Malleus, and today in Total Tactics I'll be discussing the real life pincer movement tactic and demonstrating its use in a multiplayer battle. That's right guys, a first for the series, some PvP action! In this video I'll do a quick rundown of the pincer movement and some famous historical battles that it was used in before covering the battle which features me playing as the Demons of Slanesh versus my buddy and subscriber to the channel, Tarvanath, who will be playing as the Lizardmen. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you enjoy the video. And with that, let's begin. The Pincer Movement, also known as a Double Envelopment, is a military tactic and maneuver that has been utilized throughout history. When an army attempts to perform a pincer movement, it's done in an effort to surround and attack the enemy's flanks in order to force a surrender or to overwhelm and destroy them. The principles behind the pincer movement are the basis behind many other encirclement tactics, such as the Zulu Horns of the Bull formation, which I've covered before. You can find the link to that video in the top right and in the description below. Typically, both forces would march towards each other, and one army's flanks, or pincers, would move to encircle their advancing foes. Further pincers could also be sent out in order to cut off the enemy's retreat, ensuring a full surround, or to intercept enemy reinforcements. An encircled foe can attempt to break out from the trap, but that would require great discipline on their part. A soldier surrounded by the enemy, crushed in the press of combat, unable to move or defend himself properly, can easily panic and be swept away by the encircling army. One of the potential first uses of the pincer movement in history would have been at the Battle of Marathon in 490 BC. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus describes the Athenians and Plataeans deploying their combined forces in a U-shaped formation. The wings of the Greek army were reinforced while the center was thinned out in order to match the length of the Persian forces, which outnumbered the Greeks greatly. The weakened center line withdrew against the superior Persian numbers, which allowed the strengthened Greek wings to join up and surround the Persians. This led to the numerically superior but lightly equipped Persian army panicking and retreating from the battle. One of the most famous historical examples of the pincer movement being successfully used was at the Battle of Cannae in 216 BC. The famous Carthaginian general Hannibal was able to surround and almost completely annihilate a significantly larger Roman army in what is largely considered one of the greatest tactical feats in military history. During the battle, Hannibal's line infantry withdrew from the Romans giving his flanking forces time to surround the Romans and the Carthaginian cavalry to see off their Roman counterparts. The Carthaginian infantry attacked at the front and flanks of the Roman wedge, while Hannibal's cavalry wheeled about and charged their rear lines. The Roman army became completely surrounded and lost all cohesion, which resulted in one of the bloodiest defeats of the Roman Empire. Now, let's see this in action. Shall we? So, looking at the army compositions, I can't quite remember what our gold limit was, but I think it was around 24,000. So plenty of room for picking all sorts of craziness. As the Slaneshi Demons, I chose Nikari as my general, and then a main battle line of five devoted Marauders of Slanesh with Hell Scourges. I'd back these boys up with three Fiends of Slanesh, and then have six exalted demonettes on the wings, three units on each flank. Finally, I chose three Heartseekers and two Hellstriders to serve as my outflanking cavalry. Tarvanath went with a rather beefy monstrous unit army with Nakai the Wanderer and five Sacred Croxagore units, one of them being the Cohort of Huatl, Regiment of Renown. He backed these up with a Skink Oracle on a Troglodon, four ancient salamanders and four salamander hunting packs for some pretty intense firepower. Finally, he brought a solid line of four Sarus spear units with shields and a unit of temple guard. 
feels like we've got a case of an unstoppable force versus an immovable object. Alright, so here we are. We got three units of demonettes deployed on the southern wing of the main line. Main line being a bunch of BDSM clad marauders of chaos. Look at them with their next to no armor and their shields like that's going to protect them. And their whips. Can't forget that. We've got three units of fiends of Slanesh backing them up. These Really crazy looking demon things are quite hard hitting. I do actually really love them. And then there's Nakari. Naruto running up along, supporting the front line. This whole front line is supposed to be a distraction, keeping my opponent's attention away from more demonettes. Uh, these, this is my northern wing of demonettes. Uh, these are the ones I'm trying to keep protected. Some may wonder why do I have Fiends of Slanesh and Nakari in my sacrificial front line? I have to put something there to really attract my opponent's attention. Speaking of... Uh, actually not speaking of anything. These are my <laughs> outflanking cavalry units. I got some units in the north and south. They were able to vanguard deploy up in some woods so they are hidden. I'm um, hoping they'll be able to come out with a nice surprise. Here is the Lizardman army led by Tarvanath. We got a strong front line of Croxagore led uh, by Nakar. No, not Nakari, Nakai. <laughs> and uh, some a lot of salamanders forming a significant firepower and protected from the rear with Temple Guard and Saur Spearmen. There's going to be a very hard nut to crack. But if anyone's good at cracking nuts, it's this guy. Here comes the rest of the front line. Nakari is obviously a lot faster than everything else with his 100 speed. Beans of Slanesh in position. I'm trying to take as much cover as I can in these trees. There we go. See, they're blocking some of the shots already. And here go the Marauders advancing up. Ready to take all the firepower so my more important units can make it hopefully unscathed. Ooh, those explosions. Tarvanath opening up with some crazy firepower. Here come the Marauders. He's Tarvanath has seen my demonettes coming up the flanks. So he's forming an infantry square. The Croxagore is charging out and absolutely splatting my Marauders. I wish I had brought spears, but I didn't know I would be facing a huge line of Croxagors. Here come Nakari and the Fiends, but they're stopping to just provide emotional support for the Marauders. And here come my flanking forces. I wish I had charged in the demonettes more um, spread out instead of clumped together, but I was also kind of panicking. Uh, they've engaged on both the north and southern flank. They've already shredded this unit. Oh, good lord. And now they're moving up to the next target. Uh, I've got my cavalry here. They're kind of head off by spears, so I'm moving them around. These cavalry units, though, are able to get a flank charge in on this engaged unit of spearmen who are running already. Nakari's already lost most of his health. My fiends look like they are getting splatted by uh, Nakai and some Croxagor. Nakari's looking for some more soft targets, supporting the demonettes, attacking some salamanders. Here come some Sara Spears, though, to support. And they've got their Skink Priest on Troglodon casting spells as well. Nakari has lost a lot of health. He's going to have to get out of there. Another unit of Croxagor is coming in. But I've got some cavalry coming in. Unfortunately, I can't quite tell what they are from this distance. <laughs> I think they're uh, Hellstriders. The, the southern flank? Southern flank. Looking pretty good for me. Lots of lizard units fleeing. Or on the cusp of fleeing. There's Nakari running away, trying not to die. 
Demonettes going in now trying to engage these giant salamanders. These things are a lot bigger than I thought they would be. And the... What flank is this? I think this is the southern flank. Still just kind of turned into a big mosh pit. The Lizardman Center looks like it's still intact, but pushing in from the edges. There's Nakai. I don't know why I'm sending Nakari after him. One good hit from Nakai, and Nakari's down, so... Well, let's try and do a couple little stabs. Now he's getting engaged by a Salamander. I must have lost... Oh yeah, there we go. I realized Nakari was in trouble. Ooh, surprised he didn't die there. So Nakari pulling back. He's, I hear he's good at pulling out of danger. <laughs> These dinosaurs are kicking my butt still, but the demonettes are pushing hard. At this point, they're just trying to I'm just trying to swarm them down with my numbers. Even my Marauders, what's left of them, are coming back to the fight. But Nakai's holding strong in the center. These Croxagore pushing back against my demons. Looks like these uh, Salamanders are trying to disengage. So is Nakari. Just saw him scurrying off there. Croxagore putting up a fight against my demonettes. And they are... Cavalry Demonettes, whose name I'm forgetting currently. <laughs> but looks like they're on the run. Lizard units are fleeing. I think the army losses are starting to kick into effect. More units are starting to rout. The army balance bar is edging up in my favor. couple of, uh, I think Spear Units or Temple Guard, I'm not sure, are still alive, but I think that's about it. And victory goes to the forces of Slanesh. Taking a look at the battle results, the forces of Slanesh pulled out with 377 casualties, or 49% of their army lost. The Marauders took significant losses, though that was their job as a distraction meat shield, so they worked out perfectly. The Fiends were wiped out, which did hurt a bit, but again, they were part of the frontal wave to distract. Nakari almost got finished early as he lost most of his health due to Tarvanath concentrating his firepower on him near the beginning. Due to this, I spent most of the battle just running him around trying to avoid things and casting the odd spell. Not the best use of him, but I suppose he still had fun being on the edge regardless. The exalted demonettes performed superbly, and I was quite surprised at how quickly they were able to take out their foes. The cavalry did decently overall as well. They had some tough targets in the salamanders and spearsaurus, but were still able to penetrate well. The Lizardmen suffered 298 casualties out of a total of 360 units, leading to an army loss of 82%. Somehow, one of the ancient salamanders took barely any damage, and as a whole they were quite intimidating to charge against. The Croxagore absolutely mulched my marauders, and if I didn't spread out and move quickly, the salamanders would have absolutely demolished my squishy units. The army balance was in Tarvanath's favor for much of the battle, but luckily for me, my flanking demons were able to overwhelm the lizards in the end. Big props to Tarvanath, thanks for the game bud, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for watching guys! If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, feel free to leave me a like, comment, and subscribe, as it will really help get my channel out there in that demon infested realm known as YouTube. If you have any questions, or if there's something in particular you'd like to see covered, please let me know in the comments. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!